We're looking first at the age and quantity. For this, you will need very specific project information. Because what is the fire class and the hazard type that we're dealing with in this particular application? The applicable design standard, again, that may well be project specific. Typically, if it's a system in the UK, it will be designed according to BSEN 15004, but that isn't always the case. The minimum design concentration, that's taken directly from the design standard. So again, if it's a, a, a system in the UK, that concentration can be established from uh, BSEN 15004. What are the third party approval requirements? All of the agencies have their own rules, requirements, their own uh, different approval uh, considerations for hardware and equipment. The European market has made it easier, but there is still in, at times a pre uh, preference for an LPC system if it's in the UK typically, or a VDS system if it's in Germany, or a UL system if it's in the Middle East. The hazard volume, which we've covered, the minimum expected uh, hazard temperature, because that is actually used to determine the quantity of gas. But because we're putting a gas into a space, we've also got to be mindful that we don't want to over-concentrate the space. So part of the responsibility for the design engineer is to determine the maximum expected temperature and then calculate the maximum expected design concentration or the maximum expected concentration you would see in that space after the discharge. That's really so that the designer can determine whether there are any additional safety features required in the system uh, that he needs to take into account. And then the hazard altitude, um, generally above sea level, and that would be project specific. So when we talk about design concentration, we're talking about two fundamental uh, elements to that. The first one is the concentration at which that agent will extinguish a fire. And the second one is a safety factor that is applied. And that safety factor varies according to some of the design standards. So when we talk about design concentration, we are typically talking about a concentration that includes the minimum extinguishing concentration plus the safety factor defined by the code or standard that you're working with. That extinguishing concentration is what we as manufacturers set out to do when we introduce and we develop a new system. We need to determine what is the minimum concentration that that agent will require to extinguish a fire. If it's a class A fire, we do full room testing. If it's a class B, we do a room test or a cup burner, which is an experimental means of determining a concentration. And then class C, we would do a room test. So when we talk about the safety factors, the safety factors vary according to the design standard. So a surface class A fire under 15004 would require that you determine the extinguishing concentration and then apply a safety factor of 30%. That would get to your design concentration. And FPA 2001 looks at a similar method to determine the extinguishing concentration but then a reduced safety factor. So what actually happens is if you design a system according to EN 15004 compared with NFPA 2001 you will need more gas on the European system than you will do on a system designed to the American code. ISO 14520 applies a 30% safety factor. Class A fires, all of the standards require a 30% safety factor and then class C which is this this category that we would class as um, more deep seated, a greater, uh, let's call it a higher hazard. EN 15004 actually applies the concentration based on the value of heptane, but subject not to a concentration less than the class A. NFPA 2001 is now applying a 35% concentration above extinguishing, and ISO 14520 is fully in line with EN 15004. Altitude correction, uh, this really only applies in, uh, in mountainous countries. Typically, if the altitude of the system is above a thousand meters, you may have the option, or you do have the option, to reduce the quantity of agent that you're supplying. So you need around about 11% less agent at thousand meters above sea level than you would at sea level. And conversely, in the event that you were installing a system a thousand meters uh, below sea level, the, the quantity of agent required is actually higher than the sea level uh, quantity. 
So how do you get from the design concentration to the agent uh, quantity? So what we've done is we've determined from the volume, multiplied it by, or, or determined the design concentration. What we now need to do is to determine how much agent. So you use either the flooding factor tables, or use a formula which the flooding factor tables are derived from. And for that you need the concentration that you're aiming for and the minimum temperature required. This is an example of the flooding factor table uh, taken from one of the design standards. This one is an example of FK5112, otherwise known as Novec uh, 1230, or to give a plug for the Tyco system, the Sapphire system. And what you do there is that you look at the concentration that you require. So if we're looking at a concentration of 5.3, which is in accordance with the European standard, at a minimum design temperature of 20 degrees C, you would then see that you need a flooding factor of 0.779. So you take the volume, you multiply it by 0.779, and that gives you the number of kilograms, of this case, of Novec 1230. So 100 cubic metres multiplied by 0.779 means that you need 78 kilograms of Novec 1230. Of course, at sea level conditions.